the original plan was we were going to do the live uh, the the live game jam on stage for an hour, but that that was a little bit impractical. So for the last hour, they've been working frantically in the rear room, uh, having been told simply the word resurrection as a theme, and they've all made games based on that. So they're going to show them all off in a minute. You can see what kind of game it's possible to make in such a, a, a tiny time, frame, uh, time span. Hopefully it'll be a little bit inspirational in terms of anyone can make video games if they put their minds to it and get told what to do by a crazy little bearded man. Um, <laughs> start off by introducing everyone. I'm just going to wander past with the mic and have you all introduce yourself and your company. Hello, I'm Mike. Uh, Mike Bithell, and I made an indie game called Thomas Was Alone. Actually, just pass it down. I'll stand here <laughs> briefly. Hi, I'm Simon Wraith. I'm from Mode 7. Uh, hi, I'm George Buckingham. I um, am not from anywhere in particular, but I've just released a game for iOS called Cubes, so you should buy that. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ed Paris. I'm not a game developer, so <laughs> imposter here. <laughs> I'm Kerry Turner. I uh, work for Little Loud and make weird, bleak little games under the name Really Fancy. Uh, I'm Borough Pfeiffer, I'm with 17-bit, we're working on Skulls of the Shogun. I'm Ben Vance, also working with Barut on Skulls of the Shogun. Hi, I'm Andy Hodges, I'm uh, from the Indie Stone, doing uh, projects on Void. Uh, hello, I'm Nick Cowan, also with the Indie Stone. Um, I'm Catherine Woolley from Creative Assembly. Yeah, I'm Gordon Raymond, I'm also from Creative Assembly. Um, Sarah. <laughs> I'm, One, two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sarah, also from Creative Assembly. Hello, I'm Arlen from Strongman Games. Hiya. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm Tom Betts, and I'm working with Jim Rossignol at Big Robot Games. Thank you, everyone. In a minute, we're going to uh, show off all the games on stage uh, through something that may or may not work here. Um, and I want you guys to do your best to remember what you're seeing and what you think of it, because at the end, we're going to have an audience vote as to, uh, to which game is best in some abstract way. And uh, the winner will get the right to review their own uh, latest or upcoming commercial video game on Rock, Paper, Shotgun. <laughs> We are, we are often accused of extreme bias by angry idiots whose opinions we don't agree with, so for once we will be extremely biased, and that will be lovely. Um, what I want to do while I'm uh, trying to show off all the games is I want three volunteers from the audience to come up and you're going to play the games in person, uh, such as they are, and so you will be a, a kind of secondary string of voting um, to see how these things play as well as look. So, anyone want to volunteer? Um, so. Let's have someone from row three. I'll just go and grab people at random. <laughs> uh, you, sir? Who shall I have? You, sir, there, with the long hair, yep. And this is completely random. <laughs> You've also got good hair, so you can come up. <laughs> Democracy. I'm not now. <laughs> Come on, guys. So, um, one start on the left, one start on the right, one start in the middle, and uh, just just take a play of the games. Um, meantime, the s uh, how about here? Uh, do you want to come up and show your your game first? <laughs> Uh, yep. So, just stick it here. Just stick it on top of there, that'd be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to start playing the one there? So, Eddie, do you want to tell us about your game and who this, this shouting man is? Uh, this shouting man is Kerry's boyfriend, Yestin. <laughs> Why is it a little loud? Um, so, with your mouse, you can shoot him. And he just constantly respawns, and that's it. That's resurrection. Okay. 
And you can move around to shoot him from other places if you want. Can he kill you? No, you, no, you also respawn. You okay. are invincible against this <laughs> giant <laughs> man. angry head. Okay. Uh, do, does he know he's achieved this this infamy? <laughs> he does. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good. And will he look this angry when he finds out about it? Quite possibly. Okay. Well, uh, hopefully he's honoured to be featured. Okay. And um, just quickly, how how did you make it? What was the the tools involved? What was the, uh, the biggest it's, obstacle? It's built with uh, ImpactJS, which is a HTML5 uh, like game library. It's really good. Uh, the biggest obstacle was actually having my mind work <laughs> enough to make him bounce back and forth from left to right. Uh, and in your opinion, could anyone, if they wanted to, if they put their mind to it, make something like <laughs> this masterpiece? Or does it require rare and unique mad skills that only you have? To do it in an hour is... Uh, an achievement, I like to think. It definitely is. But it's anybody else could do it, given enough man hours. Okay. So, right, everyone remember that. The shouting, angry, invincible man, and uh, we'll vote for it at the end. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, who would like to come up next? I've got some of the games on here already, I think. We'll do it. Okay. Is it on here? Yep. Thomas was 3D, okay. This is the first time these have been run on... Start with the uh, splash screen. Yeah. Okay. So should we... There you go. Okay. <laughs> so this is Mike and Simon uh, from Thomas, and, uh, Thomas Was Alone and Mode 7, respectively, and... What we've done... Is this on? Hello. Um, what we've done is we've um, taken my game and his amazing engine and kind of combine them. But the problem we had... More like mashed. Mashed, mashed, yeah. Um, <laughs> but what, we've, what we found was there wasn't much time to actually make a game. Um, so what we've done is we've, we've done pretty much the same thing I did with the original platformer, taken a reasonably good game and then put a voiceover on it in the hope that no one will notice the lack of mechanics. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah, so the... Uh, the basis of the game that we do have is about exploration. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's about an Let me say some gameplay. That's one of those terms that covers everything. Right, it's, um, it's, it's exploring a dreamscape. Yeah. Well, I don't need to discuss it because we have a voiceover. Yes, so we're just going to let the voiceover do its thing. Yes, please. Did that work? It's not going to suddenly shoot. Now, unfortunately, I didn't catch the name of the guy who volunteered to do the voiceover recording half an hour ago, so I apologize. It's going to work. <laughs> PC gaming! You don't have an SSD? Uh, I do. Well, this is running off the flash drive, which wasn't very clever. <laughs> Go and get your laptop with we'll yep. the camera on it. It's actually loading like, two gigabytes. It, no, it'll be done. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to talk about while, while we wait? Um, so, so what were the ideas behind the story? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're getting the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> so it was made purely in your custom engine, nothing that anyone else has. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Uh, if I put my laptop on your Mac, it's just going to destroy it. That's... <laughs> uh, have you got a sound jack, maybe? <sighs> yeah, we can if we whack in. The way you're Jack. DI4. This is a lot of build up to a massively disappointing game. <laughs> this wouldn't have happened with Borderlands 2, would it? <laughs> it's quite a dark game as well, so it might not pick up. Can you see that? Thomas was a cube. Wow, a weird shape to be. His adventures up to this point had been remarkably two-dimensional. No, not narratively, obviously. His story had been nuanced and witty. That had been mentioned in the reviews. A lot. As good as VVVVVV and Manic Minor, IndieGames.com had said. <laughs> Thomas didn't know why he'd felt the need to think that. But now he seemed to have depth. He was ambient. Oh, no! <laughs> Oh, 
can't blame my luck up for this one. That was actually because I actually hit the escape key. Unfortunately, there's, uh, there's no skip on the narrative, so if you could laugh again <laughs> really and, and ignore the plug again, that would be great. Thank you. A weird shape to be. His Wouldn't happen on Xbox 360. No, not narratively, obviously. His story had been nuanced and witty. That had been mentioned in the reviews. A lot. As good as VVVVVV and Manic Minor, IndieGames.com had said. Thomas didn't know why he felt the need to think that. But now he seemed to have depth. He was ambiently occluded. He was made of polygons. And his inner monologue seemed distinctly less Danny Wallacey. <laughs> less professional. Hell, it sounded like it had been recorded on a MacBook 30 minutes previously. He had been resurrected in a strange new HD world. Had everyone heard the word resurrected? He hoped they had, <laughs> as that was sort of the theme. Thomas imagined this world had been made by someone far cleverer than his previous environment. Probably someone with better hair. He was alone. Which was odd, because that was an ironic title. Better hair, but incapable of getting more than one character in a scene, eh? Thomas could also inexplicably drop light sources. That was a bit of a step up since those flat shadow planes he was used to seeing around him. He felt those lights accentuated his 1024 by 1024 texture map to a startlingly high quality. Thomas felt like he was being watched again. Not by a pixel cloud, by something far worse. He felt like he was being watched by a room full of wizened players, explorers of worlds, collectors of mushrooms and coins. The kind of people who would go to www.thomaswasalone.com <laughs> He seemed to be bl oh. That's enough, that's enough. We got to the URL, that's the important thing. <laughs> nice one. Thank you, Simon and Mike. Hey, hey look, it's still loaded. <laughs> version behind the screen. All right, who else uh, wants to show their wares to the world? Anyone? Excellent. Can we get the camera again, please? This is probably going to be the easiest way, generally, I think. So we have um, the Skulls of the Shogun guys here to show off Something that may or may not involve skulls and shoguns again. Uh, this is a complete and total departure from our previous <laughs> work. Yes. Uh, so, the theme is Resurrection. This is called Life Giver. Uh, it's a minimal game, minimalist. Uh, it's, it's, yes. It's got nothing to do with it only uh, being built in an hour. Uh, it was really the aesthetic that we were trying to reach for. Uh, so, you can restart the game. That's, that's one feature. <laughs> kind of an art game a little bit. It's kind of unplayable, uh, but that's a, that's a commentary, really. The trouble is, they just don't understand. It's not that it's unplayable. Where is the player? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a good question. Where is the player, really? Uh, just explain yeah, what's going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to. I'm leading up, building up to it, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, some is, slack. Oh, you see the yellow, the yellow square is, is the player. He's the life giver. That's you. Uh, and you're going out into this war zone and resurrecting these dead black uh, pixels. Uh, they're trying to kill each other. You resurrect them and they just want to kill each other. So your goal is to bring them all back to life before they can kill each other again. What did you make it in? Uh, this is in uh, XA. Okay, cool. And if you had a reasonable amount of time to make it in, say like an hour and one minute, what, what further ideas would you have uh, added to it? Do you want to... Yeah, sure. Well, for one, the end state. We were, there's a, a, a few different things we were thinking about, just like score or like getting everyone alive or, uh, or you know, a, in addition to a time limit. Excellent. Yeah. Right. Thank you, guys. So, again, take a note. This is, do you have a name for it? Or? A life giver. Life yeah, giver. Sure. Mm -hmm. Excellent. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Shall we uh, do a board game instead? And we definitely need a camera for that. 
could try holding that, but it's definitely not going to work. Should we do yours instead? Because um, that's on the laptop, yeah. So I'll leave you to play and I'll hold that near you oh, if you like. Okay. Um, so this is Kerry Turner from uh, Little Loud, aka Really Fancy. That's me. Oh, hang on. Is that working? No. No, that's brilliantly not working. Uh, oh, I might have to look at it on my machine. Yeah, I think this is going to be a theme of the day. <laughs> Basically, it's a challenge to see how many different laptops can you stack on top of a MacBook Air during the duration of one hour, and will it survive? Right, let's try this. Um, essentially, um, it's an extraordinarily bleak take on the typing tutor genre. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which um, Mavis Beacon kills you. <laughs> well... It, uh, it kind of makes more sense to play than to demo playing, it's, um, but never mind, that's, that's fine, I'll just show you. So, uh, Do you want me to try playing it and you explain it? Yeah. Oh. Camera. John, camera. <laughs> hey, let's admire her Monkey Island 1 wallpaper as well while we... <laughs> Um, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> thanks. Um, yeah, it's a it's a typing tutor type game. Sorry, I've just started off for you there. Okay. Um. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> wow, that was that really made me think about this existence. Is, um, <laughs> The big, la the, the big laugh is for the fact that we're entirely getting your shoulder. Oh. <laughs> it's a good shoulder, isn't it? <laughs> Sexy. Um, uh, let okay. me hang on one second. This is going terribly well, isn't it? Let me just reset that for you. So uh, then people can actually see the start of it. Uh, right, OK. Uh, you'll have to type quickly, otherwise they'll be looking right. at this or that. Oh, we? There we right. go again. There we go. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so it's a typing tutor game. Uh, the the theme was resurrection, and I had the idea of um, uh, something communicating with you from beyond via the medium of a typing tutor. Get it sort of made sen more sense at the time. Um, <laughs> but I finished something in an hour, which is the important <laughs> oh, thing. God. Um, so. I, um, <laughs> As, as you type, um, you, you type the words on the screen and it starts talking to you as, as you type. Um. Oh, <laughs> Grandma? <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got a virus on your... <laughs> <laughs> does it... Uh, is there a, a finale to this, or does it...? Uh, yeah, that, that was it just there. No, nothing uh, happens. It goes back to being an ordinary typing tutor at the end. Um, OK. Well, yeah. I'm going <laughs> to <Okay. laughs> go and sit in the corner and shiver for a bit. Can I leave you guys to... Thank you, Kerry. <laughs> Should we do George's board game next? Yeah. Can you get that around to here? Do you need a second player or can you demo? I need three more players. Or, well, there's Wait. four players. Yeah, okay. Come on, play. You, you play as well. All right. Uh, all right, so we each get a hand of cards. Do you want to Hand of cards each. And we each get... Start off with ten tokens. Um, so, so basically, it uh, starts off um, with, say, me starting and... Might be a bit higher. Nope. Do you want to keep the other side of you? Uh, quite possibly. All right, so I start off with a shotgun attack, and I'm attacking with four tokens. Okay. And I'm attacking Alec. So oh. you can attack with a shotgun. Um, so you can either defend yourself if you have a bulletproof vest, or... Bulletproof vest, okay. So yeah, you, need to, you put four tokens on that to, you know, count for four points of defence. Okay. Or you could attack, uh, attack back with a machete or a shotgun. Okay, can I do that as well as defending? No, no you okay. choose, choose one or the other. So this, this has ended, it's been nullified, oh. so... Uh, now, um, turn passes on to you. Uh, you get to choose to attack somebody. Um, can I defend? 
<laughs> no, no, you need, you need, you need to attack. You need, you need to attack. Um, so the idea of this game is to kill the person who can resurrect themselves. So one person has a card in their hand um, that says resurrection. And if they die, they get to come back into the game unexpectedly. Um, and it's the task of all of us to kill them without knowing who they are. And uh, what, what software engine did he use to create? <laughs> well, there's this amazing website called WizTix where you can buy blank cards. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm indebted to them. And they also sold a few counters. Yeah. Wow. It, they can do anything on the internet <laughs> these days. <laughs> well, I can just go all out with yeah, all my things. You can go all out with all of your things. I'm shotgun someone with all my tokens. All, all ten of your tokens? Who are you going to shotgun? Uh, you. Okay, excellent. That sounds good. Uh, I have a bulletproof vest, but I have um, already used up half my tokens, so um, I'm dead. Excellent. Uh, uplifting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Simon, it's now, it's now your go. What are you going to do? Oh, God, he's got a machete. <laughs> Is a pan lid defensive? That's defensive, yeah. You sure? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you ever been hit with a pan lid? Are you sure? Uh, I think I, I'm going to machete. Alec. Oh. How much do I have? Well, as, as many as you like. How much do you wouldn't want to attack with? Everything. Everything. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to defend with a pan lid. I get yeah. a pan lid. You don't. Uh, but I haven't got enough to defend, have I? So. No, no. So you're also dead. I'm dead. Right. Okay. So now there's uh, just you two left. Can I, and it's, it's your can turn. I'm not attacking with anything because I've run out of tokens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess you can't. Oh, so You've got a machete. You can attack with a machete. And, and <laughs> attack with a machete? Have you got, can you defend the machete? Panlet defends the machete. Vest. No, the panlet. It's, it's not machete proof. Oh, yeah, okay. You do that. Do that. But it's not putting it. Ugh. Yeah, well, okay. there's still enough to kill you. All right, do you have anything to attack with? You've got a shotgun. Shotgun. They're that's famous that's, for <laughs> that's an offensive weapon. A shotgun is. <laughs> yeah, I've got a shotgun. Okay, shotgun. Got a That's good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have you have you anything to attack with? No. All right. Who, who was the resurrection? Are you still alive? Yeah. You're still alive. Okay. No. You win. All of us lose. <laughs> cool. So uh, thank you, George. And what would you do with this, given given a little bit more time? I'd make it so that it doesn't kind of peter out if no one has anything to attack with. <laughs> Game design. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, next, I'll randomly nominate someone. Tom, fancy it? Yeah. If you come around here with it, it's probably easiest. Cheers. Slap it on there. On top yeah, of it's fine. It's fine. So this is Tom from uh, Big Robot. Is my mouse going to work? Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Right. Um, this is a masterpiece, obviously. Just like all the ones before. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, when I was realising that it was going to take far too long to do anything decent, I did the sensible thing and just started stacking image effects and everything. <laughs> um, so uh, really, this is less of a kind of resurrection game and more of a sort of sadistic sort of murder simulator. So you've just got a, yes. a little area okay. full of... <laughs> you're getting my shoulder again. Yeah, you've got a, a, a nice little arena here full of burning... Hello. I feel like, I feel like you love me, both of you. Um, a lovely little area here with burning fires uh, in which you can sort of repeatedly spawn happy guys. And there they are, look. Smiling away, wandering around aimlessly until they walk into a fire and die. <laughs> um, at which point they turn into a nice little cross, and you can oh there he goes, and you can just keep spawning, res respawning, re-resurrecting these guys um, for your entertainment. And, uh, and that's about that's about it really. I was going to try and work in a philosophical backstory, but I didn't have time. <laughs> <laughs> what did you make it in? Is it Unity? This is Unity, yeah. Excellent. This is why I could stack on all the image effects. Cool. And uh, do you reckon? Anyone else could have uh, come up with such a thing? Or, you know? uh, I'm not sure, really. It took a lot of uh, brain power. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you probably could. Just a stretch. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Let's have the, uh, the Zomboid guys. Can you bring the camera around here? Uh, 
Have you done two or <laughs> one? Title screens on the <laughs> All right. So <laughs> yeah. It's like 24. So uh, do you want to introduce your game? Which one of you wants to speak? Um, well, I've, I've done the, uh, the background art and title screen, uh, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm a programmer. We all swapped roles to make it a bit more challenging because we thought 45 minutes is a bit too long. Yeah, so it's, it's deliberately generous yeah. about it. So how, how did the zombies get to space? That's the, the main issue. Well, here. that's left for the player to find out, really. Mm, profound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, should we see the game? Yeah, I mean, basically... Uh, multiplayer was probably the most requested feature of Project Zombie. <laughs> At last! So, so we thought we'll, uh, we'll give it a stab in, in 40 minutes. So you can see that uh, you can both play. <laughs> and they are in space. They are, then they are in space. Wow. There are these kind of I can see rooms. that. They're sort of stars, aren't they? And we've got, like, we've got the, the pillow. Uh, we've got a baseball bat. Uh, oh, no, there's another pillow. <laughs> and there's a pillow again. And that, that's... that's <laughs> That's quite representative of the way the items work in the real projects on Yeah, board. yeah, and, and indeed in reality. And, and indeed in space. Yeah. Yeah, and in space, yeah. And um, we've got scores, but uh, the, you're, you're permanently tied. <laughs> okay. So, so we think that's kind of, you know, competitiveness breeds aggression, and we thought that it would be more relaxing if neither player ever scored any points. W would you say that your game would be making the world a better place? I definitely would agree with that. I mean, uh, all of space. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just, it's, it's, it's ready to go. I think. I mean, I will. We'll probably upload it to the our forums this evening, and uh, anyone who's already got a copy of Project Zomboid can just delete that and get this. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. And I know Nintendo got a lot of flag back in the days for their seventy-pound games, but I think this is the one that could bring back that price point to a I, to a wide audience. I think you're probably right. Yeah. Excellent. We did uh, do some music, actually. Yeah? Let's see if the camera can pick it up. Oh, the mic can pick it up. Hi-fi. That's very quiet. <laughs> I mean, this is just greedy. You've made the world's best million-selling game, next million-selling game, and you're going to be number one in the charts. I mean, <laughs> when will the indie stone bandwagon stop? Sorry to cut you out there. Cool. Do you want to bring yours around? This is the Creative Assembly who are going to show something even more spectacular than Rome Total War 2. Sorry, Total War Rome 2. Yeah. Hmm? Okay. She's got, she's, this is our lovely demonstrator. I do the one word of the words. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we decided the theme was resurrection. Uh, so we decided, well, this kind of is an obvious theme to create the greatest video game superhero character of all time. Jesus! Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> versus the greatest villain of all time, science. <laughs> so what's going on here is that evil scientists are trying to resurrect what God has rightfully killed, a woolly mammoth, by defrosting him. <laughs> So it's, it's up to Jesus to, uh, to basically kill them with this very well documented in the Bible, uh, Ultra Heat Laser Vision. I think you've, you've heard of that. Yeah, and as you see, uh, we've just won for Jesus. Uh, unfortunately, if you don't uh, do it in enough time, uh, well, science wins and Jesus dies. Uh, the other thing that can happen is if Jesus comes into a contact with a scientist, if you know, religion and science meet, that's just the end of everything. Uh, you'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. that's our very, very deep game. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. So, Erwin, very quickly, the last one. You're up. Very quickly. Let's see, where, where do I stick it? Just, Just stick it on my laptop. Abuse it. It's, it's dead now. Okay. Let's see. Here we go. Yeah, okay. Um, I'll hold that close. Huh? Do that. Okay, let's see. So, here the level build stuff. Any challenge to programmers? How did I do this? <laughs> um, and then you press O to flip sides. And as you can see, the balls that fall build the level as you go along. And then you have to reach the gold coin without being hit by any of the balls. It doesn't work particularly well as such, but I think this might actually be something someday. Excellent. Or you think you might actually build it up and release it? Yeah, why else? not? Excellent. Something positive. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
So what's the, the resurrection aspect? Don't ask, please. Okay. <laughs> I cheated. For your benefit, I'll say this this city was yes. formerly yeah, Carthage yeah, yeah, yeah. that is rebuilding, rebuilding. Well, originally, originally, I intended uh, the player to flip sides when hit by a ball, but that never happened, so <laughs> it became a bit loose. Stupid. Excellent. Cool. Well, but thank you. And uh, that's everyone, isn't it? I think I got everyone. Cool. Sorry. Uh, yeah. 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 Cool. So I'll just have a little chat with our volunteers here. Actually, if you want to come around, guys. So uh, introduce yourself, sir, and select a game that you um, think was a victor. Well, my name's Elliot, uh, and I think probably the Jesus versus Science. Jesus versus Science. Okay. Thank you. Here's a uh, a valve mouse mat signed by Guy Neil to thank you for your time. Oh, Cheers. And you, sir? Hi, I'm Johnny, and uh, the one I identified with most was playing Jesus. You've got the hair for it, definitely. <laughs> and you've also got a comic book about sacrifice, also from Valve, so thank you for your time. Cheers. There's nothing in here, I'm just teasing. <laughs> so, uh, what's your name, sir? Stan, and uh, best one, definitely Laser-Eyed Zombie Jesus. Laser-Eyed Zombie Jesus. Oh, we've got an early contender. Here is a limited edition valve print for you to Thank stick you on your wall. Cheers. So, finally, to see what you guys think, let's just hear your cheers in order for the different developers. So, we've got uh, Mike and Simon. George and his board game. We've got Eddie and his angry man. We've got Kerry and her terrifying typing tutor. The skulls of the Shogun guys. We, we've already uh, started work on version two, so... <laughs> Same time next year. The Indie Stone, Zomboid in Space. I don't think anyone's going to cheer for Jesus, are they? <laughs> Creative Assembly in there, Jesus versus Science. <laughs> Erland and his game that's definitely about resurrection. <laughs> and Tom and his flaming dudes of <laughs> life and death. Uh, I think we've got a clear vector in the Creative Assembly here who have subverted both religion and science this day. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I will offer you the opportunity to write your own review of Rome 2 or whatever on Rock, Paper, Shotgun 2. <laughs> and uh, if you complain about the AI, that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> So thank you everyone, thank you hugely to everyone involved, they've done a great job and I uh, hope a few of you feel you could go and make games in a slightly longer period of time yourself at some point. <laughs> Cheers, goodbye.